Have you ever wondered what you would do to frighten Lazarus after he'd been raised from the dead? What would you do to threaten him? Lazarus, I'm going to kill you. Caligula said, I'm going to kill you. He says, ha ha ha. And he says, stop ha ha haing. I'm going to kill you as I'm killing all the Christians. He doubles over and uncontrollable laughter comes up for air and says, Caligula, haven't you heard? Death is dead. Death is dead. How do you frighten somebody who's already been there and knows the one who's going to let him out? But just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God's hand, of breathing new air and finding it celestial. of waking up in glory and finding it home. Ladies and gentlemen, your hope and mine in Christ is that one day we will be with God. One day we will be with Him. We look back upon history and what do we see? Empires rising and falling. Revolutions and counter-revolutions, wealth accumulated and wealth dispersed. Shakespeare has spoken of the rise and fall of great ones that ebb and flow with the moon. I've heard a crazed, cracked Austrian announce to the world the establishment of a German Reich that would last a thousand years. I've seen an Italian clown saying he was going to stop and restart the calendar with his own ascension to power. I have seen America more wealthier and in terms of military weaponry more powerful than the rest of the world put together so that had the American people so desired they could have outdone a Caesar or an Alexander in the range and scale of their conquest. Hitler and Mussolini dead remembered only in infamy. Stalin is a forbidden name in the regime he helped found and dominate for some three decades. America is haunted by fears of running out of the precious fluids that keeps her motorways roaring and the smog settling. All in one lifetime, all in one lifetime, all gone with the wind. Behind the debris of the fallings of our solemn supermen and imperial diplomatists lies the gigantic figure of one person because of whom by whom, in whom, and through whom mankind may still survive the person of Jesus Christ. Isaiah calls him Wonderful Counselor. Peter looks at him and says, You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God. The Apostle Paul, Saul at that time in Acts chapter 9 says, What shall you have me to do, Lord? Thomas raised his hand and touched his side and said, Thee, my Lord and my God, Thee, Lord of me, Thee, God of me. When Pilate looked at him and said, Art thou the Christ? He says, You have said it. When the priest looked at him and said, Are you the Son of God? He says, You're right in stating that I am the Son of God. And in John chapter 14, he says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. Lord, where are you going? If we don't know where you're going how can we find the way I am the way I am the truth I am the life no man comes unto the Father except through me show us the Father Lord if you've seen me you've seen the Father Philip have you been with me so long and you don't know that when you've seen me you've seen the Father I and my Father are one and he who believes in me greater things than these shall he do